Hi there. Today, I'm taking you 3,500 years back in time. At that time, there was a man called Joshua, who was a great example for me. His story is really exciting. Maybe you've heard the story of when Moses and the Israelites left Egypt? They started a long journey towards a country that God had promised to give them. And God could talk to Moses so that he knew exactly what to do on the way. The people experienced amazing miracles, like when God opened up the Red Sea for them. But strangely, the Israelites always started to complain and doubt God when things started getting hard. Hmm. But Joshua was different. Just like Moses, he was always full of faith in God. Joshua quickly became one of the Israelites' most important warriors. He must have learned a lot from Moses. They set up camp before they came to the land of Canaan. I have chosen you. Twelve strong and brave chieftains to spy out the land of Canaan for forty days. Of course, Joshua was one of the spies, and so was his friend, Caleb. We will find out everything we need to know about the land God has given us. No one was allowed to know why they were there, and they didn't give away their plans to anyone. The land was way better than they thought. It was green, with lots of farms, and plenty of food. They took lots of fruit, and a bunch of grapes that were so big that two men had to carry it between them. It was so fantastic that they said that it is a land that flows with milk and honey. But there was one big challenge in the land. One of the nations that lived there, the Anakim, were much bigger and much taller than anyone the spies had ever seen before. Those people are actually giants! Yeah, those cities are gonna be really hard to take! After 40 days, the spies came back to Moses and told what they had seen. Straight away, the people started doubting that God would help them. They didn't think that they would be able to enter the land. The other spies also started to doubt. No, we can't just attack those people. Yeah, all, all the men we saw there were big and strong. We felt like grasshoppers compared to them. And they probably felt the same. That only made things worse. If only we had died in Egypt! If only we could die here, in the wilderness! Why did God lead us to this land? To fall by the sword and for our wives and children to be taken captive by the enemy? Imagine, suddenly they wanted to go back to Egypt. Joshua, Caleb and Moses knew that it's a sin to doubt God and now the people were doing it again. But Joshua and Caleb were thinking differently. They were in a spirit of faith. Listen, 
God will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land. They are no more than a piece of bread for us. The Israelites became so angry that they wanted to kill Joshua and Caleb. Then God had to stop the people himself. How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them. But Moses loved the people of Israel and asked God to forgive them. And because Moses was a faithful man, God decided to listen. God would bring the people into the land, but not without punishment. Because the people of Israel didn't believe, God would let them wander in the wilderness for 40 years before they could enter Canaan. The Israelites should have listened to Joshua and Caleb instead of doubting God. But Joshua held on to his faith and never doubted God's word about the promised land. But we'll hear more about that in the next episode. See ya. Oh, hi there. Today, I'm taking you 3,500 years back in time. Finally, I can tell you the rest of the story about a hero in the Bible called Joshua. He is a huge example for me. As I told you last time, Joshua became the leader of the Israelites. He was supposed to lead them into Canaan, the land that God had promised them. First, they had to walk around in the wilderness for 40 years as a punishment for not believing in God. But Joshua and Caleb believed. And when God said he would give the people a country, then they were sure he would do it. After 40 years, God let them enter Canaan. So they got ready and took the Ark of the Covenant with them, the, the chest you see here. This was the holiest and most important thing the Jews possessed. They had been told by God to make it in gold and on the top of it, they should make a lid with two angels. God spoke to the Israelites in between these two angels and there were several other sacred things that should lie inside this chest. And they had to bring this whole chest into Canaan. However, they got stopped by a huge river, the Jordan. How on earth are we supposed to get the coffin over to the other side? But Joshua already knew God's plan. You must just walk straight over. first thing they met was the city of Jericho. It was surrounded by a massive wall. The people who lived there had already heard that the Israelites would come. So Jericho was completely closed. No one came out and no one came in. But the Israelites had to defeat Jericho if they were going to keep going into Canaan. They set up camp and had to figure out how to take this city. A man with a raised sword suddenly stood before Joshua. Wait, are you one of us or do you belong to the enemy? Neither. I am the chief of the Lord's army. I have arrived. Joshua understood that he was a messenger sent by God. 
What does my lord have to say to his servant? Take off your shoes, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Now, Joshua listened carefully. God had promised Joshua that the Israelites would take Jericho, but the way he was going to take the city was quite strange. This was not going to be an ordinary conquest of a city. That was for sure. The next morning, Joshua told the people what God had said. The priests are to carry the Ark of the Covenant and get ready to walk. Seven priests shall walk in front of the Ark and blow their horns. Armed men with weapons will walk at the front and the rest of the people will follow at the very back. And one more thing, you must not say a word until I give the order. And so they walked in complete silence around the city once and went back to the camp. I can imagine many were wondering what Joshua was doing. The next morning, everyone got up early and walked quietly around the city, once just as before. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they were going to take the city, but before they left, Joshua gave a warning to everyone. We will take the city, but no one is to take anything for himself. All treasures are to be given into the treasure store for God. This day, they went around the city seven times. And when the horns blew for the seventh time, all the people shouted as loud as they could. Then the miracle happened. The walls of Jericho fell. and the Israelites could walk right into the city. The battle was won because Joshua had led the people exactly as God had told him. He was always obedient to God, and in this way, they continued to take the rest of Canaan. God helped them drive out their enemies, and the Israelites can now live peacefully in their new home. Well. Thanks for following along. I'll see you in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya. Hi there. Today, I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. I want to tell you a really interesting story about the biggest hero in the whole Bible. His name is Jesus. This particular story happened during Passover, when he was just 12 years old. He and his family had saved up money and traveled a long, long way to get to Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Passover is the holiest time of the year for the Jews, and everyone wants to go to Jerusalem to celebrate. They went to the temple to sacrifice for God, ate their Passover meal together, and joined in with all the other traditions that belong to the Passover festival. <laughs> Even though Jesus was only 12, he knew very well that he was the Son of God. Jesus loved being in the temple, his Father's house. God spoke to his people here, and Jesus felt right at home. He could study the holy writings, God's word. He also read about himself because the prophets long ago had seen that a savior would come to earth. Even though Jesus knew who he was, I'm sure he felt that he had to read the word of God because it would help him to get through a lot of different situations. But he also knew that before he could start with hey, that huge task of saving day. the world, Let's go. he had to grow up as a normal boy in a normal family. When Passover was over, 
Mary and Joseph packed all their things for the journey back home, just like everyone else. It was really crowded, so it was important to start off as soon as possible. In the meantime, Jesus went to the temple one last time because he knew he would have to wait for a whole year until he could come back. Where is that boy? He probably went ahead with his cousins. I guess we'll just have to catch up to him. Hmm. But Jesus was still at the temple where he sat with some Pharisees who are Bible experts. They usually sit together and discuss the word of God. Jesus listened carefully, but then he started to talk about the scriptures and the meaning of them. Hmm. I've never seen a 12-year-old boy that is so wise and knows the word of God so well. They talked together for hours, while Mary and Joseph were still on their way home. It wasn't until the next day that they realized he wasn't there. What happened to him? Have the Romans taken him? Or maybe he got caught by some robbers? We'll just have to hurry back to Jerusalem. They searched for Jesus for three Jesus. days. Jesus! Jesus! Where are you? Jesus! Where are you? Jesus! Jesus! Where are you, Jesus? <laughs> Jesus! Jesus! What are we going to do, Joseph? Hmm. Oh, what if he's still in the temple? Oh yes, why haven't we thought of that before? <clears throat> Jesus? Hi, Dad. Why didn't you just come with us when we were leaving? We were worried sick that something had happened to you. Why? Don't you understand that I had to stay in my father's house? Well... <clears throat> He's got a point. Okay, Jesus, I understand. But now we have to travel back to our house. Jesus finally joined his parents, but the most important thing for him was to do God's will. Jesus kept on reading and thinking about the Word of God, which we should do too. If we do this from when we are young, we really get to know God. So, thanks for following along with this story. We'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi there! Today, I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. I want to tell you another story about the biggest hero in the whole Bible, Jesus. He is God's own son and our savior. In this episode, you can see one of the many miracles Jesus did, which he can do for you too. It happened when Jesus was in Jerusalem with his disciples, celebrating a big Jewish holiday. There was a special pool in Jerusalem where sometimes an angel would come down from heaven and stir the pool. The first person to touch the water got healed whatever disease they had. That's why there were so many sick people lying by the pool. Blind, crippled, and paralyzed people. They all hoped to be healed by the stirred water. One of them was a man who couldn't walk. He had been waiting for 38 years to be healed. <sighs> I will never be the first to touch the water. But this was the day his life would be completely changed. Would you like to get well? Jesus knew that he had been sick for ages, so it was kind of a weird question, huh? Lord, I have nobody who can carry me to the water when the pool gets stirred up. 
And when I finally get there, somebody else has already gotten there before me. Stand up, take your mat, and walk. Huh? After 38 years! Thank you so much! Huh? Who is he to carry his mat on the Sabbath? The day of rest? Yes. Surely. Is he not breaking the law? Hmm. But who was it that made him do it? You see, already then, Jesus started getting enemies. People who didn't like what he did and said. But Jesus knew it would come. Y you'll hear more about that another time. Anyway. Later, Jesus met the healed man at the temple. Now? You're well. Well, yes. So stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you. Jesus just wants to save people. He can heal the sick, but more importantly, he can save us from sin. This is the help he is longing to give us. He asked the man, do you want to get well? And that is the same question I have to answer for myself. Do I want Jesus to save me? If I do, and if I truly believe it, he will help me. So thanks for following along with this story. We'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi there! Today, I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. I want to tell you another story about the biggest hero in the whole Bible, Jesus. He is God's own son and our savior. In this episode, you'll see why some people really didn't like what Jesus did. It happened when Jesus was in Jerusalem celebrating a big Jewish holiday. Maybe you remember from last time, when Jesus healed a crippled man, that some of the Pharisees didn't like the fact that the healed man was carrying his mat on the Sabbath. They became angry because this was the day of rest, and people were not supposed to do any work, such as healing or carrying things. At least, that's what the Pharisees thought. Hello. We're just curious to know, who did the work of healing for you? Well, actually, I have no idea who that man was. He was gone so quick, I didn't even get a chance to thank him. But he sure did a fine job. <laughs> Later, the cripple met Jesus at the temple. Well, thank you so much. Right away, he went to the Pharisees and told them who Jesus was. <laughs> Jesus! His name was Jesus! He probably thought that they wanted to work together with Jesus to help more people. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't really what the Pharisees had in mind. I have heard about that man before. A man walking round, healing people, and then making them believe him. Can you imagine breaking the holy law by working on the day of rest? Indeed, 
But the biggest problem is his threat to our fine council of Pharisees. We are going to find him, and we are going to get him killed. Somehow. At that time, Pharisees were very important and powerful men. Their job was to protect the law of God given to Moses many years before. But Jesus thought completely different of the Pharisees. They are hypocrites, den of vipers. I know them, and I know that they do not have the love of God within them. The Pharisees were supposed to know everything about God. But the way they were treating the people of Israel was completely different from what God had said. They were certainly not holy and pure. Jesus was not afraid of the Pharisees. He knew that it still wasn't time for them to catch him. So instead, he kept talking to the people to spread the word of God. Everyone who hears my message and has faith in the one who sent me has eternal life. The scriptures tell about me, but you refuse to come to me for eternal life. I don't care about human praise, but I do know that none of you love God. Who does he think that he is? People must not believe his words. Well, some of the things he says might be true. Nonsense. He has no right to say such things. I have come with my father's authority, and you have not welcomed me. But you will welcome people who come on their own. How could you possibly believe? You like to have your friends praise you, and you don't care about praise that the only God can give. Oh, we are leaving! This wasn't the last time Jesus and the Pharisees met. The evil plans and hypocrisy of the Pharisees only made things worse for themselves because God was not with them. They pretended to be good and holy men when in fact they were just fake and jealous. In the meantime, Jesus spent his time spreading the true gospel of God because he knew God was watching over him. It gave people hope completely opposite of what the Pharisees did. So, you see, Jesus is trying to teach us an important lesson here. Hypocrisy, trying to look better than I really am, is only hurting myself. We have to be honest and true. God can see everything in our hearts, and he loves to see a pure heart. So, Thanks for following along with this story, and we'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi friends, and welcome to Bible Kids. Join us as we explore some of the most exciting stories from the Bible. Learn about the true heroes of faith and experience Jesus as your very best friend.
Bible Kids app today so that you will never miss out on our exciting games and videos. I am so glad I have a good and faithful friend. I love him too, my Jesus, my friend. Hi there. Today, I'm taking you 2,700 years back in time. Today, I want to tell you one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It's the story of the Israeli prophet, Elisha. He always heard God's voice. So he often gave the king advice on his next moves. At that time, Israel was at war with the king of the Syrians. We will send our armies here, here, and over there. The Israelis will have no chance of escaping. <laughs> Elisha was always listening to God, and God hmm. told him everything their enemies hmm. had planned. Your Majesty, beware of passing by this place, because the Syrians will go down there. The Israeli king did as told, and their army escaped the Syrians several times. Somebody must have told them. Tell me, who among us is snitching to the Israelis? N no one, your majesty. It's Elisha, the Israelite prophet, who tells Israel's king the words that you speak, even in your bedroom. <gasps> hmm. Go and find out where he is. Your majesty, I heard he is right here in this town. Well, go and capture him. Oh no! Master, master! What will we do? Oh, boy, don't be afraid. There are more of us than there are of them. What do you mean? We're two, and they are, I don't know, thousands? Come outside with me, boy. Dear Lord, please open his eyes so that he may see. Dear Lord, strike this nation with blindness. What happened? And where is that prophet? This isn't the right road or the right city. Follow me. 
and I'll lead you to the man you are looking for. Just follow my voice. Keep going. But Elisha had another plan in mind. He brought them right up to the Israeli king. Dear Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. What? Where are we? Wait, this is a trap! Elijah, should I kill them? Should I? No, don't kill them. Did you capture them with your own sword or bow? Do you have the right to kill them? Put food and water in front of them so they can eat and drink and return to their master. Um, all right then. Oh man, this is so good. Cheers. 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 Thank you so much. Have a great trip home. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Yes, you know. And then they let us go straight home. What? Really? With such generosity, we better stop harassing them. <laughs> <laughs> After that, the Syrians no longer attacked Israel. So they could live in peace. And the cool part of the story is this. Elijah knew that God was always watching over him, but his servant couldn't see that right away. He only saw the enemies right in front of them. When God opened the boy's eyes, he could suddenly see the huge army sent from heaven always watching over them. The same goes for us. Sometimes, the only thing we can see are the difficulties right in front of us. But if we let God open up our eyes, we get to see how He's always watching over us. He will strengthen those who love Him, so we don't have to fear anything. Thanks for following along with this episode. We'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi there! Today, I'm taking you 2,400 years back in time. In this episode, you'll meet a man called Nehemiah. He used to live in Israel, but had to move to Persia because his home was taken by the enemies. All of this had happened because the Israelites were disobedient to God. Now, Nehemiah served the Persian king as his cupbearer, which was quite an important job. He did his job well and was appreciated by the king. But he longed to get back home to Israel. Nehemiah loved his people and his country, but most of all, he loved God who chose the Jews to be his people. We have guests, Your Majesty. They've come from Israel, but they're not asking to see you, Your Majesty. They come to see your cupbearer. Of course. Go speak with your guests, Nehemiah. Dear brother, what's going on? Nehemiah, I came to tell you, the Jews left in Jerusalem 
are in big trouble. The wall around the city is broken down, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. But that means our holy city is open for all enemies to take. Lord, God of heaven, please listen to the prayer of your servant. We have wronged you greatly. We haven't kept the commandments you gave us. But remember the word that you gave Moses. If we are unfaithful, you will scatter us among the peoples. But if we keep your commandments, you will gather our people and bring us to the place that you have chosen. Lord, listen to the prayer of your servant and those who honour your name. Amen. Tell me, why are you so sad, Nehemiah? You're not sick, so you must have a broken heart. Long live the king. But why shouldn't I be sad when my home is in ruins and its gates destroyed by fire? So, what do you need? Well... If it pleases the king, please send me home so that I can rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Okay, okay, hold on a second. So, usually a question like that could easily get a servant killed. But Nehemiah knew that God was with him. So, he knew he did the right thing. Okay, alright, keep going. How long will you be away, and when will you return? I will give you every permission needed, and my best soldiers will join you. Phew. Why have you come here? Uh, for a visit. You can't enter. Yes, I can. We have the king's permission. See? Ah. Let's check out the damage done to the wall. Listen, Jews, priests, officers and officials. 
You see the trouble that we're in. Jerusalem is in ruins, and its gates are destroyed by fire. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we won't continue to be in disgrace. The Persian king gives us everything we need. God will make us succeed. Yes, let's get this wall rebuilt. I was wondering, why was it exactly Nehemiah that wanted to rebuild the wall? Because he lived all the way over in Persia. I think it was because he loved God so much. He couldn't just sit quietly and watch the holy city fall to ruins. He asked God for forgiveness of the sins of his people and promised to stay faithful. God saw that and that's why he wanted to use Nehemiah. Next time, you'll see that it wouldn't be so easy to rebuild the wall. But because Nehemiah loved God and did as he commanded, God would help the Israelites in every situation. So thanks for following along with this story. And we'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya. Hi there. Today, I'm taking you 2,400 years back in time. Finally, I can tell you the rest of the story of a man called Nehemiah. He was a Jew who had just returned to Jerusalem after his people had to flee the country. Because the Jews were disobedient to God, Jerusalem was burned down by their enemies. But Nehemiah loved his people and his country. And most of all, he loved God, who chose the Jews to be his people. So Nehemiah came back to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem with his people. But not everybody was too happy about the building project going on. They had their own plans for Jerusalem. Do they think they can fix things themselves? Do they think they can finish it in a day? Are they going to build the walls from the piles of rubble, even though they have been burned to the ground? Even if a fox would climb on it, the wall would break. But Nehemiah didn't listen to his negative neighbors. He just kept on working, trusting that God was with them. Great work, everybody. We're halfway there already because you're working so hard. Mm. But the wall is going to fall down. The stones are too broken. It's impossible to build. Don't worry about it. God will support us in our work. It will succeed. Hmm, so the work on the walls is progressing, and the gaps are being closed. We have to do something! Well, if we attack now, we can just walk through the gaps in the walls. Before they know it, we'll be inside the city to kill them and stop the work. What a brilliant idea! <laughs> God had already warned Nehemiah about the attack. So they held guard day and night. Everybody's very spread out along the wall. Hmm. <clears throat> Listen, everybody. The enemy could attack at any moment. When you hear the trumpet sound, come and gather right here. 
Fight for your families, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your houses. Remember, the Lord is great and powerful. From this day on, the builders did their work with a load in one hand and a weapon in the other. And Nehemiah had everyone working on the lowest parts of the walls first. They have found out. Their God has spoiled our plan. What a stupid idea you had. Huh. We'll have to try something else. A trap. Dear Nehemiah, we have heard that the building project is going well and that there are no gaps left in the wall. Great job. Let's meet together over here. Kind regards, your neighbors. But they just want to trick me. No way I'm walking into their trap. Sorry, I have important work to do. I can't come over. Can't come down? Huh. I have heard that you are building this wall just to rebel and become king yourself. Now, the king wants to hear about this. So come, let's talk together. Huh? None of this is true. You're just making this up. Ah! Why won't they come? They tried tricking Nehemiah like this several times. But Nehemiah simply trusted God and kept on building the wall. And after just 52 days, the wall was finished. That's impossible. That kind of work could only be completed with the help of their god. Who knows what else they're capable of? <sighs> I don't want to know. You see, in order to get their city back, the Jews had to build and fight at the same time. But God was with them and gave them the city as promised. And the same goes for us. We're not building on an actual wall, but we have to guard our hearts in order to protect them from evil and keep them pure for God. Just as they were holding a load in one hand and a weapon in the other, we should always do the good and at the same time fight against evil. We have to watch especially out for weak spots, where we know bad thoughts want to enter our hearts. With God's help, I can keep my heart pure and be a servant for God, just like Nehemiah. So thanks for following along with this story, and we'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi there! Today, I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. At that time, there was a man called Paul, who was a great example for me. Paul was the successful man who gave up all earthly wealth in order to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Paul had a bright future. He was born into a respected family, and when he was about 14 years old, he was sent to Jerusalem to become a Jewish Pharisee. A Pharisee was a person who knew a lot about the Jewish teachings and laws. Many of them were powerful, and they used their power to make sure that everyone followed the rules as they thought were right. 
one thing that Paul and the other Pharisees thought was completely wrong was to believe that Jesus is the true Savior that had risen from the dead. Now that Jesus isn't around anymore, nobody is going to believe in him anyway. But don't you see that more and more people are joining the Christians? It must be because of that man preaching in the streets. What was his name again? Ugh. Stephen. You always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. And now you have become betrayers. That man, Stephen, he is one of the most persistent Christians here in Jerusalem. We must get him. If we kill him, we'll stop the others too. The Pharisees got the people along with them to attack Stephen. Paul was with the crowd too and saw everything that happened. Then they broke into all the Christian homes and threw them into jail. And Paul was one of the most zealous persecutors of the Christians. He did everything he could to wipe out all faith in Jesus. And he was willing to go further than most other people. Honored High Priest, many Christians have escaped from Jerusalem. Let me go to Damascus to bring them back. Then we can arrest them too. These Christians mocking God in that way. God has not sent any son to earth. If he had, then the holy men in Jerusalem would have known about it. What a disgrace. Paul! Paul! Why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up now and stand on your feet. I have shown myself to you for this purpose, to make you a servant and witness, both of the things that you have seen and of the things you will see when I save you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes so they turn from darkness to light, from Satan's power to God. I can't see. Jesus, where are you? Let's keep going to Damascus. Jesus? God's own son? Using me? Paul was blind for three days. He neither ate nor drank. Ananias. Here I am. Jesus? Find Paul and lay your hands on him so that he gets his sight back again. But Jesus, I have heard of all the evil he has done and now he wants to throw everyone in jail. Go, for I have chosen him to tell all the people about me, including kings and the people of Israel. My brother, Jesus has sent me so that you can get your sight back and be filled with the Holy Spirit.
Ananias realized that Paul had completely changed. Before, Paul had been proud of his power and fought against the Christians. But now, he got a completely different goal in life. He had met Jesus. You know what? I thought I had everything I could wish for. Knowledge, money, and power. But now I see that it's not worth anything. It was all just waste because now I have seen Jesus and what he can give is worth so much more. That man Paul, have you heard about him? He must have been insane. Isn't he the one who wanted to wipe out all Christians? And now, he has become one of Jesus' followers himself. When we find him, we're going to kill him. But where could Paul have been hiding? At least he won't be able to sneak out of here. <laughs> They're still looking for you, Paul, but we're going to get you safely out of town. Just lie completely still. Paul went from being a Pharisee with wealth and power to being persecuted as a Christian. He did this because he had met Jesus and he knew that everything else was worth nothing compared to serving him. And the same goes for us. We too can have Jesus as our Lord and master. Nothing in this world is worth more than that. Next time, you'll hear about what happened with Paul now that he had taken Jesus as master in his life. But for now, thanks for following along with this story, and we'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi there. Today, I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. At that time, there was a man called Paul, who was a great example for me. We saw in the previous episode that Paul met Jesus on his way to Damascus and that he chose a whole new direction in his life. Three years later, Paul felt that he had to return to Jerusalem even though he knew it would bring him great danger. Hey, are you the one called Paul? Yes, that, that's me. Perfect. Oh, don't mind these people. I'm Barnabas, and I know you quit persecuting us Christians here in Jerusalem. Come with me, I'd like you to meet Peter. I can imagine Paul and Peter had very interesting things to talk about. Finally, they could talk about Jesus, who had saved both of them. This is incredible! I have to tell everybody! I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. 
Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Paul, is that you? What happened to you? You helped us persecute the Christians, and now you become a Christian yourself? You got it all wrong. Jesus is the Messiah, God's own son. The life I lived before was just a lie. You traitor, you betrayed the Jewish faith. Get out of my sight or we'll kill you. No way, I am speaking the truth. But Paul, they are being serious. You need to get out of Jerusalem. Ah, uh, all right. After only 15 days in Jerusalem, Paul had to flee for his life. He then returned to his home in Tarsus. He stayed there for many years, before his friend Barnabas suddenly showed up at his doorstep. Hi Paul, <laughs> it's been a long time. It's you, Barnabas. After all these years, what brings you all the way to Tarsus? I've come to pick you up. We have a whole new church in Antioch, and we need faithful people like you who can show the way for the newly converted. Will you come with me? Barnabas, I'm so happy you asked, because Jesus has taught me so much about his life, completely opposite of what I knew before. Exactly. Don't worry that you were a Pharisee or that you persecuted the Christians. It's Jesus himself who has called you because he wants to use you. Yes, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I'm the biggest sinner of all. But this is why I was shown mercy. So I can be an example for those who are going to believe in him for eternal life. So come with me. The message of Jesus must be spread out into the world. Yes, let's meet the Church of Antioch. Antioch was the first city where Paul worked with the Christians. Later, he traveled on to many other places. Because Jesus could create something completely new in him, Paul was able to help so many people. No matter what their lives had been like before, Jesus could forgive and deliver them from the sin they had lived in so that they could become disciples. Paul felt like the biggest sinner of all, but was shown mercy by God. The only thing he cared about now was to do the task that Jesus had given him. In the exact same way, Jesus can forgive us for the bad things that we have done, so that we can start a whole new life as his disciples. So, thanks for following along with this story. We'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi friends, and welcome to Bible Kids. Join us as we explore some of the most exciting stories from the Bible. Learn about the true heroes of faith and experience Jesus as your very best friend. I am so glad I have a friend. Download the Bible Kids app today so that you will never miss out on our exciting games and videos. I am so glad I
Hi there. Today, I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. Finally, I can tell you the rest of the story about a man called Paul, who is a great example for me. Paul felt like the biggest sinner of all, but was shown mercy by God to start a new life. He moved to Antioch, where he worked so that each person could come to a happy life through the gospel of Jesus. The Holy Spirit has been working in the church, but the time has come for us to be sent out to spread the gospel about Jesus. Let's go! So Paul and his friends went on long missionary journeys, and sometimes they were quite dangerous. They often talked with people they met along the way, traveling from city to city, and in this way, some of the early Christian churches were made. On one of his journeys, Paul was joined by one of his good friends, Silas. Many people wanted to listen to what Paul and Silas said and became followers of Jesus. But others weren't too happy about this life-changing message. Ah, these men teach the people about Jesus and have connections with higher powers. Our fortune tellers can't do that. So they'll ruin the market and we won't be able to earn any money. Yes, we have to stop them now. Honorable judges, these Jews create unrest in our city. They are preaching customs that we cannot live by. After all, we are Romans. Put them in jail. I don't want any other gods in our city. And you, prison guard, watch extra carefully over these two men. Trust me, no one gets out of jail as long as I'm a prison guard. in here. Paul and Silas were put into the deepest and darkest cell. But there was no complaining to be heard from them. From this gloomy dungeon, there came only sound of songs. They were singing worship to God. joyfully can say I have found the way to heaven and God's kingdom grows like leaven it increases in me gloriously each day Lord we praise thee Lord we praise thee by thy wisdom now didst call us to this wondrous life divine I'm sure all the prisoners have escaped now. And just when I promised to keep extra good watch of these prisoners. 
Oh, I wish I was dead. No, wait. Don't hurt yourself. We're all still here. Oh, my lords. What can I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, both you and all your family. All praise to Jesus Christ! This turned out to be quite a night for the prison guard. He and his family were now believing in Jesus, and they held a great feast with Paul and Silas. But the next morning they had to return to prison in order to keep the prison guard out of trouble. Oh, oh. I'm afraid I have to put you back into prison because I'm not the one who decides whether you can be released or not. It doesn't matter. We know that God and Jesus look after us, so we're not afraid. We know that everything serves for the good of those who love God. <clears throat> well, we can see that you serve a God who looks after you, who can send earthquakes and can open prisons for you. Still, you are so good that you don't even try to escape. When you serve such a mighty God, we can't hold you captive. You're free men. You can go. <laughs> Paul was not afraid, no matter what happened, because he knew God was with him. Therefore, he could sing hymns and praises in prison. He was willing to do anything for Jesus because he knew his reward would be huge. And that's the way it is for us too. We can also do everything for Jesus' sake, and then Jesus will be with us and will reward us. That's why we can also be thankful and happy about everything that comes on our way. So, thanks for following along with this story. We'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Today, I'm going to take you 2,000 years back in time. We'll be meeting Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. Peter was chosen by Jesus to be the rock on which to build the church. So he was going to take responsibility for the Christians. Peter loved Jesus and wanted to do what Jesus asked him to do. The problem was just that he didn't quite manage it. He wasn't really that brave or, or strong, but still, Jesus had a plan in mind. This was their last night together, just before Jesus would be crucified. Simon Peter, I have prayed to God for you, that your faith should not fail. Lord, I'm ready to go with you both into prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. Me? No, no, no. I would never. That same evening, 
Jesus was taken prisoner and led to the high priest. Hey, I know you. You're also with Jesus, the one who they just imprisoned. No, I don't know him. Oh yes, you do. You're one of Jesus' disciples. No, I'm not. Oh yes, you're also from Galilee. You were with Jesus. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Jesus died on the cross and was in the kingdom of death for three days. But then he rose from the dead and was with his disciples for 40 days. He strengthened them and talked with them about the things that belong to the kingdom of God. But now you shall go to Jerusalem, where you shall wait for the promise from my Father. You shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to the people of Israel? It is not for you to know the times or seasons which God has established by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall tell people about me in Jerusalem and everywhere and to the end of the earth. Why are you standing here, looking up at the sky? Jesus will come back, in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. It is true. Let's go back to Jerusalem, like Jesus told us, and wait there while we pray. After ten days, the Holy Spirit was sent to earth, and a whole new time started for humanity. As you can see, Jesus knew that Peter would deny him, even though Peter's greatest wish was to be his disciple. It was only a matter of time before they got the strength of the Holy Spirit and would get the courage to stand firm as a rock. And the same goes for us. Jesus has a plan for us. When we want to follow him but feel too weak, he will help us so we get all the strength we need to fight the good fight of faith. Next time, you'll hear exactly what happened with Peter and the other disciples now that they've got the Holy Spirit. But for now, thanks for following along with this story. I'll see you again in the next episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! there. Today I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. As I told you last time, 
Peter was chosen to be the rock on which to build the church. Jesus went back to heaven, but Peter still didn't have the courage needed for this huge task he'd received. The 120 disciples gathered together and waited for the Holy Spirit to be sent from heaven. that these flames aren't dangerous, quite the opposite actually. This is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. It would give them strength and teach them everything they need to know. Now finally they understood what Jesus had told them all along. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Now they went out on the streets to spread the gospel of Jesus. And somehow they could speak the languages of all foreigners. How have they learned to speak in all these languages? Aren't they from Galilee? Nah, they're just full of sweet wine. Explain this to us! Listen to my words. We are not drunk, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Therefore, let all of Israel know that God has made that same Jesus, who you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Brother, what should we do? Change your hearts and lives. Each of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God invites. Many of the people who listened to Peter 
received the gospel right away. On that day, 3,000 people were baptised and began following Jesus. The Holy Spirit filled Peter with courage and with strength. He would become the rock Jesus would build the church on. And the same goes for us. God has sent the Holy Spirit to earth so that we too can understand what is right and get all the power we need to follow Jesus. Next time, you'll hear more about all the amazing miracles that happened with Peter and the other disciples. But for now, thanks for following along with this story. I'll see you again in the next episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Oh, hey there! Today I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. At last, I can tell you about the incredible miracles that happened after Jesus had gone back to heaven and the disciples had received the Holy Spirit. Although they met resistance, they were not afraid because they had Jesus' power inside them and they knew that God was always on their side. Do you have anything to give to an old man who's paralysed and can't walk? Look at us! Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Why do you look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? His faith in Jesus has made this man strong enough to walk while you watched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Those men! They are liars and imposters! <laughs> by what power or by what name have you healed this man? We have healed him in the name of Jesus, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This is impossible to deny because the man standing next to them is living proof. The name Jesus must not be spread any further amongst the people. I command you not to speak in the name of Jesus. We would really like to throw you in prison. But we don't dare because the people would be furious with us, said the high priest. But we who trust in God are not afraid of anyone even if they are high priests. Now, Lord, look on the threats of the priests and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Stretch out your hand to heal and let signs and wonders be done 
through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Peter and the other disciples were not afraid, even though they were threatened with imprisonment. They had Jesus' power in them, so they didn't have to be afraid of anyone. All they wanted was to do God's will, and that all men could become disciples, just like them. And the same goes for us. When we let Jesus into our hearts, we have the power to do God's will, and God is always with us, so we don't have to be afraid of anyone or anything. And we can help those around us, so they can be just as happy as we are. So, thanks for following along with this story. We'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Oh, hey there! Today, I'm taking you 2,000 years back in time. I'd like you to meet Simon the Sorcerer, who wanted to buy God's blessing for money. He performed magic for the people, and everyone loved him. And you? What's your problem? I, I, I want to be successful in business. Then the gods require 15 gold coins. And in three years, you will be a rich man. One of Jesus' disciples, Philip, was at the same place at that time, preaching the gospel. Oh, no! Oh, I'm so sorry! No problem at all. I'm Philip. Are you okay? Oh, actually, no. I was hoping that the great sorcerer Simon would be able to do a miracle so that I could be healed. Well, I can't afford to pay him. You know, he doesn't actually have the power to make you well. But Jesus, the Son of God, can make you well. Faith in the God of miracles can save you. Oh! Wow! What's happened? I can't believe it! Oh! <laughs> What's going on over there? This man has healed me in the name of Jesus! <laughs> and it was completely free too! <laughs> this man healed the lame man while I watched. How is that possible? I need to find out who he is. Oh, great Simon, I found the man. His name is Philip and he comes from Jerusalem. He preaches the gospel about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. And he can heal the sick too. Aha. These are real miracles. I must get to know him. Now you're baptized to repentance and the forgiveness of your sins. Oh, wow! 
When the apostles Peter and John learned that so many people had received the word of God, they travelled all the way from Jerusalem. They prayed for the people so that they too would receive the Holy Spirit. Dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, fill this man with the Holy Spirit. Wow! I want the power that they have too. Most honourable Peter, please also give me this power so that anyone in whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. <gasps> may your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray to the Lord if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by evil. Oh! Uh. <sighs> yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're right, Peter. I thought that God's power could be bought for money. You must pray to the Lord for me, that none of the things you have spoken may come upon me. Dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, fill your hands with the Holy Spirit. Simon was full of sorrow about himself, and he repented. He learned that God can't be fooled. You can't hide something bad in your heart and think that God will bless you. There are no shortcuts. God can only bless people who repent of their sins and are obedient to him. So thanks for following along with this story. I'll see you again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi friends and welcome to Bible Kids. Join us as we explore some of the most exciting stories from the Bible. Learn about the true heroes of faith and experience Jesus as your very best friend. Download the Bible Kids app today so that you will never miss out on our exciting games and videos. there. Today I'm going to take you 2,000 years back in time. I want to tell you about a woman named Lydia and the start of the first Christian church in Europe. Lydia lived in a city called Philippi in Macedonia. She sold expensive purple cloth which at that time was very difficult to make and her business was quite a success. Oh yes, this Tyrian purple will go perfectly with your eye colour. <laughs> Actually, it looks so good on you, I think I'll give it to you for free. No, 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 please, just keep your money. Let's hurry up. I think the other girls are already waiting for us. Oh, it's so good to see you. Have you had a nice day? Lydia wasn't Jewish, but she believed in the living God. So she often came together with other women to pray. Dear God, thank you for all the blessings in my life. But more importantly, help me to do your will and help me to find the things of eternal value. Amen. Meanwhile, Paul was on a missionary journey 
across the sea, together with his friends Silas, Luke and Timothy. Hey! Hey! Come over here to Macedonia! It's really important! Please help us! <gasps> Everybody! Wake up! I had the strangest dream. I'm sure Jesus wants us to go to Macedonia to tell the people about him. Hmm, can we just get another five minutes? No, no, no. We need to get going straight away. I was in Tarsus, you know, while Jesus himself taught me everything about him. First hand. It was incredible. Paul and his friends travelled to Macedonia and soon came to Philippi, the town where Lydia lived. Dear God, help me to do your will and help me to find the things of eternal value. Amen. <coughs> Greetings. I hear that you are praying to the living God. Yes, we do. But have you heard about his son, Jesus Christ? He came to earth to die for our sins and show us how to live for God. I do know the living God, but this name, Jesus, we've never heard of. You said he could show us how to live for God? Who is he? It is the man that has saved my life. Jesus Christ is God's own son and came to earth sin. I first met him on my way to Damascus. After that, my life was changed completely. And now, Jesus lives within me, in my heart. Oh, I want to receive Jesus in my heart too. What, what, what do I have to do to become his disciple? If you want to show that you want to live a new life and live completely for God, you can be baptized to repentance and forgiveness of sin. Yes, that is all I want. Will you please baptize me and everyone in my home? Yes, this river will work just fine. <laughs> Paul, I, I, I need to hear so much more about this. If you believe I am faithful to the Lord, Please come to my house and stay. Yes, we'd love to stay. And right there in Lydia's home, the first church in Europe was born. Even though Lydia was a successful businesswoman, she loved God and only wanted to serve him. That's why God could open her heart to understand Paul's message about Jesus. And if we really love God and want to be Jesus' followers, God will open our hearts too, just as he did for that faithful woman in Philippi. So, thanks for following along with the story. I'll see you in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Oh, hey there! Today, I'm going to take you 2,000 years back in time. I want to tell you about this one time when Paul was in Athens, in Greece. The people of Athens believed in many different gods or idols. All these countless gods, and they don't believe in the one and living God? Two 
choose the unknown god. Huh. Bless our crops, O Demeter, and give us rain so that we have a rich harvest. Mom, Mom, look over there. I wonder what's happening. Uh, just another big talker, I suppose. But let's hear what he has to say. Why do you make offerings to idols, which are only made of stone? How can they help you? Let me tell you about Jesus Christ, who was a real man, who was raised from the dead. Uh, Mom, did that really happen? I've never heard of it before, but I would like to know more about this man, Jesus. Yes, we should take this babbler to the Areopagus so he can explain himself. They brought Paul to Areopagus Hill, where the people of Athens loved arguing and talking about new ideas. Foreigner! You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears. Explain yourself. People of Athens, I see that you worship many different gods. But I found an altar saying, To the unknown god. So, let me tell you who this is. God who made the world and everything in it gives life and breath to all things. He has made all of us and knows exactly what will happen to us and where we live. He wants us to seek him, though he is not far from each one of us. God is not like gold or silver or stone, something man-made, a piece of art. Now he commands all people to repent. He will judge the world by Jesus, the man whom he has chosen. We know this is true because he was raised from the dead. Who ever heard of such a thing? Now we know you're crazy. No, I don't think he's crazy. I would like to hear more about this. Yes, so would I. I've always wondered if there really was an unknown god. I feel like this man is telling the truth. Which of the other gods has ever done something for us anyway? And he said we have to repent. I felt like that was meant for me. Several of the people in Athens turned away from idols and became followers of Jesus. And to this day, there are still many idols, even if it's not giving offerings to statues. You see, idols can be anything that we love more than living for God. Paul wanted people to repent from having such idols and instead become followers of Jesus. That's what I really want to do. And what about you? So, thanks for following along with this story. I'll see you in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Oh, hey there! Today, I'm going to take you 2,000 years back in time. Do you remember Philip? You know, the disciple who boldly talked about Jesus, so Simon the sorcerer repented from his sins. Well, I want to tell you about how Philip could help a complete stranger become a Christian. Hmm. Stand up, Philip, and go toward the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Huh? Why would the angel say that? Hmm. God must have a purpose for this. Hmm. 
Nagasi, can you make sense of this scroll? What scroll? This one. I got it at the temple before leaving Jerusalem. Huh. Who is that? The spirit is telling me to go talk with them. Okay, Nagasi. Listen to this from the prophet Isaiah. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. So what does it mean? With all due respect, Alamaya, I thought you knew me better. How should I know? I'm only a chariot driver from Ethiopia. Um, hello? I hear you're reading from the Word of God? Yes, I just got this to learn more about God. That's fantastic. But do you understand what you're reading? Uh, actually, um, no. But, but how can I, unless somebody teaches me? Hey! Maybe you can explain it for me. Won't you join me? Yeah, sure thing. So, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or somebody else? It's somebody else. Well, who is it? I actually knew him personally. Who is it? It's a prophecy about a man called Jesus, and he is God's own son. I'd love to tell you all about him, but it's kind of a long story. Well, that's no problem. We've got a long road ahead. <laughs> OK, OK. <clears throat> so, there was this one time where we had 5,000 hungry people, but only five loaves of bread and two fish. And, if you believe this to be true, and want to follow Jesus, repent from your sins and be baptised. Yes! Stop! Nagasi! Stop the chariot! See, here's water. What's stopping me from being baptised? As I said, Alamayu, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Yes! Please! I am baptizing you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, Philip. We would love to invite you to our home in Ethiopia and please tell us everything. What? Nagasi, where did he go? I, I don't understand. One moment, Philip was there, and now, he's suddenly gone. But I wanted to invite him to come to Ethiopia with us. So strange. It must be God who has taken him away. Come, we need to get back to Ethiopia as soon as possible. People need to hear about this life-changing message. Wow, what a beautiful place the spirit has taken me to. Look, there's a town. Let's see who wants to hear the message about Jesus. And so Philip kept on spreading the message of Jesus in nearby towns and many people became Christians. What's special about Philip is that he was always ready to follow the Holy Spirit, what God told him in his heart. He wasn't afraid to talk about Jesus, whom he loved. And actually, we can be missionaries too, if we only love Jesus and are obedient to what the Holy Spirit is telling us. So, 
Thanks for following along with the story. We'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Oh, hey there! Today, I'm going to take you 2,000 years back in time. I'd like you to meet Tabitha, also known as Dorcas. She was a Christian disciple from Joppa, who did many good things, helped many people and was loved by all. And there you go. Oh, you girls are so beautiful. But you better get home before it's dark. I don't want your parents to worry. Hello, Yana. And hi, Sarah. So nice to see you two. Oh, hi, Tabitha. I see you're busy as usual. You always seem to be sewing something. Yes, it's something I'm good at. So I try to use it to bless people. And while they're here, I can have a chat with them about Jesus, too. But Sarah, I see you could do with a new tunic. What's your favourite colour? Hmm, I like blue and purple, too. Perfect. Then I'll make you a blue tunic with a purple bow. You'll have the prettiest tunic in town. <gasps> really? Thanks. Of course. Thank you so much for the tunic. It's so hard to make ends meet these days, so it means a lot. God bless you and good night. Good night, Tabitha. Good night. See you around. <coughs> Sarah, have you heard? Tabitha is going to die. What? Mum. Hi, Sarah. There you are. What's happened? Is is Tabitha dead? No, but Tabitha has become very sick during the night. And we're afraid she's going to die very soon. No, it can't be. We were here only yesterday, talking to her. But she did look tired. Oh, she's been so kind to all of us. I wish we could help her. Hey, I heard that the Apostle Peter is staying nearby in Lydda, and that he healed the man who had been sick for eight years. Do you think he can heal Tabitha too? I don't know. But this is the only chance we've got. Please rush and ask Peter to come. We don't have any time to lose. Wait! What's wrong? Peter will come to heal Tabitha as soon as possible. It's too late! Tabitha is dead! Oh no! <laughs> no! It's not too late. Sarah, Tabitha is dead. But don't you think God, who healed that sick man, can do a miracle for Tabitha too? She's right. We should get Peter anyway. He is a disciple of Jesus Christ, who raised Lazarus from the dead. I'll go as fast as I can. And I'm coming with you. Me too. No, 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 young lady. You're going to stay right here. Someone needs to watch over Tabitha while we wait for Peter. Don't worry, Tabitha. Peter will come to help, and I'm sure God will do a miracle for you. this beautiful cloak that Tabitha made for me. Her life has ended too soon. Of all people, she did not deserve this. Please, please. I see how much Tabitha has meant to you all, but you must leave the room now. I need to be alone in here. 
I pray to you, Lord Jesus. You know your faithful disciple Tabitha and the love she has shown for others. Her example in unselfishness has made her well known. Jesus, bring Tabitha back to life and use this opportunity to glorify your name. Amen. Tabitha, rise up. Peter, is it you? Hi, Tabitha. What happened? I was so tired, I must have fallen asleep. <gasps> Tabitha, you're not dead. What? <laughs> Friends, we serve the living God. See Tabitha, whom you all love. She has been brought back to life. Oh my, praise be God and his son Jesus Christ, who can truly do miracles in our lives. Let us be witnesses and tell as many as possible about him and how he can save us from our sin. But Sarah, we never got around to making that tunic for you. Come. Let's get you measured. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, word of the miracle spread quickly and many people in Joppa came to faith in Jesus. And right where we are, we too can bless the others and be a good example of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, just like Tabitha. That's all for now. Thanks for following along with this story. We'll see each other again in another episode of Bible Heroes of Faith. See ya! Hi friends, and welcome to Bible Kids. Join us as we explore some of the most exciting stories from the Bible. Learn about the true heroes of faith and experience Jesus as your very best friend. Download the Bible Kids app today so that you will never miss out on our exciting games and videos. friend.